Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Share, subscribe, like this video. Make sure you put your prayer request in the bottom, as always. If you haven't checked that, Blue Heaven has actually done another video today. GG's on a roll. Just got some confirmation you might want to hear from. Uh, pretty incredible video, GG. Uh, once again, we want to keep Gary, Gator 1111, him and his family in your prayers, and Kim Fisher and her in your prayers also. Let's keep everybody in their prayers and keep my cat in his prayers too. As you can see, I don't, I think he's gone. I don't know if I can get him in here or not. Without him waking up. Say hello, Gabe. I think he gone. <sighs> if I could only sleep like him, I would have it made, people. Have it made. He'd been passed out for a while. He just got up here and just passed out. But uh, there's a lot going on. Once again, Belarus. Now, Kim Fisher got that late last night after my video, before she even saw my video about Belarus. And once again, I keep telling everybody that this is a very important event, and it is. It's one of the markers of the rapture coming. Well, Lukashenko, which is the president of Belarus, Putin met. And he is saying Wagner wants to go into Poland. Now, you know what that means. They're a NATO country, Poland is. And that would bring Article 5. And this is probably how it probably gets started. So, we got to keep our eyes on that. That's developing in the last four hours, okay? As I said, I would keep you updated with what I'm seeing out there. But it looks like the Wagner Group, which made their way into, into uh, Belarus, is now wanting to go into Poland. So, it's any day that this thing's going to hit the fan. Also, from the, all the words we're hearing out of Israel is they've got a civil war on their hands. Israel is about to be divided down the middle. A lot of the, the soldiers are already resigning. Their military is dwindling by the day. This is the beginning of Jacob's troubles. You know, Israel's got a very powerful army, but if there ain't many more left in the army to fight, that's probably why we see the war of Gog and Magog and why they roll in there so easily when it does happen, which we won't see. You know, somebody asked me earlier about the rapture. They're like, well, how do you know for confident? Well, you know, Jesus was the first one to teach us about the rapture. You're going to say, Chris, uh, what do you mean, the first one? He gave us lots of hints. A lot of people don't realize that Jesus was a Galilean, and all the disciples was too. So they go, he used a lot of their traditions, including the rapture, as part of their tradition. Is based on the Jewish wedding. We are the bride. This is where a lot of churches get it completely and utterly wrong. But Jesus said, I'm going to go prepare a place for you. Okay? And it is true. He made a promise. It's a covenant. And then the Holy Spirit was talking to me during, I was watching a show on it earlier. Very great show. If you haven't watched it, it's called uh, Before the Wrath. I suggest each and every one of you that can get it, get it and watch it. It's going to teach you a lot of things. But the Holy Spirit was dealing me through the time I was watching it. And it said, that's not the second coming. I said, no, that's the rapture. It was Jesus that taught it first. And then he gave the mystery to Paul. The rapture is very real, people, which I've told you from the beginning that it is. And that you are in the last days. You are the generation that Jesus was talking about. We are the bride. And he is the groom. He's coming back because he's already prepared the place for us. All he's waiting on is the Father to tap him on the shoulder. But he also said, if you will know the season. And then I got flashes. This is what I got. So I'm watching this, and I start seeing flashes. And God was just giving me stuff over and over. He showed me the kids of today. He gave me a picture of the church today that don't even really truly even believe him and don't even teach the, what him and Paul taught. So he's flashing all this in my head while I'm watching this. He's, he's showing me. He's showing me the nuclear weapons of today. He's showing me the famines and the, and the hungry 
and the homeless sitting on the streets. He showed me San Francisco. He showed me all kinds of everything started flashing in front of my eyes while I'm watching this. He was confirming to me that this is the season. This is the season that he's coming. And if that don't get you excited, there ain't nothing on the planet that's going to get you excited. Now, this is what he was giving me tonight by watching this. Kim Fisher was the one who suggested it to me. She said, you, you, you've got to watch it. You've got to watch it now. And I'm watching it. And they gave a percentage of, you know, pre-trib versus post-trib and mid-trib. We make up 30%, 36%. 18 to post-trib and 5% mid-trib. And what it is, they explain it by not teaching the culture of that time. Why Jesus was explaining to the disciples and explaining it like a wedding, the way Jesus was going to set it up exactly like a Jewish wedding, was so they could understand it. And that's how he's going to set it up, so they could understand it. And that's what Jesus taught. He was going to leave. He was going to come back. And you'll know the season. If you know the season, he won't come what? As a thief in the night. If you're watching. And you're watching. Then he won't come as a thief. See, when he says you'll be watching, it doesn't mean we're going to know that exact day. It means we know the season. We know that it's coming. Just like we do today. And that's why he gave me the flashes of the children of today. The scoffers. Everything. He was giving me flashes of this while I'm watching this. He's never done that before. I would see things around the world while I was watching this. And he's, he told me, he said, Chris, don't stop preaching what you're preaching. I am coming. And I've told you to tell them that. And I am coming for my bride. And those that have prepared themselves and are waiting on me, I'm coming for them. Steady the ship. Told me months ago that people would start to fall away. And they would get discouraged and aggravated. He said, you can't do that. He said, people will see dates, people will set dates, and they will come and go. That's what he told me months ago. This is what I heard. And I said, what do I do, Father? What if they start to fall off the boat? He said, you won't let that. You will keep them steady. Make sure that they always know that I'm coming and I love them. So that's what I've done. And I got that in around Passover. That's when he gave me that message. Steady the ship. Don't let my children take their eyes off the heavens because I'm coming. So that's what I've done ever since. It's kind of stay the ship, bringing other channels together. That's what we've tried to do. And God has done that by giving us all bits and pieces to keep us occupied and waiting. Just like he's doing you with your dreams and visions to keep you occupied to let you know that it is coming to not take your eye off the prize. We know what season we're in. We see the stuff that's happening. He told us about Belarus before it ever happened. He told us they would get nuclear weapons. They did. He told us they would invade another country. They're doing that as we speak. Or at least they're gearing up for it. Everything the Lord has told us is coming to pass. And people say he don't talk to us anymore. Let me tell you something. He's talking. People just ain't listening. He wants us to know that he's coming. And he is. And we have to be ready. We're watching Israel. We're watching what's happening in Europe and other places. But those there in Syria are places that are hotbed right now with going on. And with this information coming out of Belarus, once again, making headlines. And Israel also about the great civil war. With Netanyahu getting ready to go into surgery to get a pacemaker, I do believe that the other side of the government will make a move on his party. They're planning it. This is the beginning of Jacob's trouble. See, I was taught from a very young age, if you want to truly know when Jesus is coming, watch Israel. Okay? It's always been the key from the beginning. People don't understand it. They think the Jews don't play no part in this, but they are the biggest part. The seven-year tribulation is for them. Okay? But get in there to that one part in Matthew where it talks about two sevens, okay? The seven and seven. And that is, there's going to be a seven-year wedding and a seven-year tribulation at the same time. What did I get in that one dream? Two sevens. And I never knew what they meant until now. That's what they meant. 
the seven year, this was God proven to us that there was a rapture, people. This is what God led me to tonight. That's why I did this video. There will be a seven year wedding and there will be a seven year tribulation going on at the same time. There's your proof of the rapture. It's scripture, people. And the Lord pointed it out to me, and I never really even thought of it that way. But it's right there in black and white. Go into Matthew when he's talking about the wedding, and you're going to find it. Now, if you don't know how to rightfully divide it, you're going to get pieces. Because he's talking about the tribulation and the rapture all at the same time. And if you don't know how to rightfully divide, you put it all together, it just jumbled. That's where everybody gets this post and mid-trip because they can't divide the Bible. But what Jesus was talking about was a seven-year wedding feast. See, in the Jewish wedding, look it up right now if you don't believe me. Now, Jesus based all this on the Jewish wedding, the Galilean wedding. Everything, the rapture is based on it. In a seven-year Galilean wedding, you got seven days that he comes back, okay? It's like seven years. It's like a seven-year wedding uh, in that process. The more I've, I've tried to study it tonight, more in depth. But you can look it up about the Jewish wedding, the Galilean wedding. So you've got that seven days of the wedding. And then he talks about uh, after that, during that. So you've got seven years. I'm trying to get all this together. My mind is tired. Seven years of the wedding, which we will be up there. We're getting our crowns and all that stuff, gold, silver, all that. And then those down here, the Jews, which is represented by the ten virgins, okay? The five virgins had their oil full. The other five did not. That's the five that had their oil full was the church. The other five was the Jewish. That's what the Lord was leading me to tonight. I'm like, wow, I never even thought of it that way. And you put that all together, it's the number 10. I saw the 10 and two sevens months ago. I didn't know what they meant. I do now. He was confirming to me tonight. The five is the church that got their oil full. The other five is Israel that does not. But it, she will be saved during the tribulation. You get what I'm saying? You got... The wedding feast for seven days, which will be seven years, and you got the seven-year tribulation, all happening at the same time. One in heaven, one down here. There's your proof of the rapture, and God led me to that tonight. Wasn't thinking about it, never crossed my mind, but he wanted me to tell you guys that. He wanted you to think. He's like, tell them, I am coming. I am coming. This is the end. You know that this is the season. You know it is. A lot know they are Lord it is, but they're scared to death of it because they don't want it to happen. But God's sheep does not want this world. They're ready to go. That's why I did this video. This was for you, God's sheep, to know that our Father is coming. We are in that season, so don't turn, don't put your head down, don't get discouraged, aggravated. He is coming and he is on his way. You're going to hear that chauffeur very soon. You're going to see the dead rise very soon. Your, your lost loved ones that have passed will probably show up on your doorstep very soon. So don't freak out when it happens, okay? But I'm telling you, we're in the season. So don't worry. This right here, let me tell you something, people. This is the greatest time. Even though it's the scariest and darkest time in human history, it's also the greatest time. Because the groom is coming to get the bride. We're about to be married forever with peace, love, joy, no more sadness, no more tears. Them days are coming to an end. But you are, listen to me, very clearly. You are the generation that it talks about. That's confirmed to me tonight. We are that generation. That will see the Lord come in the sky, yell down like an archangel, and call us up, along with the dead saints. You are that generation, and the Lord wanted me to tell you that, and to prepare yourselves, and be ready, because He is coming. Don't listen to the world, the scoffers, 
that was another thing that he flashed in front of my eyes watching that. That's what he was talking about. He showed it to me. And wanted me to let everybody know he is coming. Do not The people who don't believe he's coming, there's nothing you can do for them. Just pray for them. But he is coming. And tonight he showed me that. Without a doubt, he's on his way. You can either believe me or not. But you can see I have no, you know, no doubt whatsoever that this is the generation. Showed it to me. So have yourselves ready. Listen for the chauffeur. Because like I said, it's coming. You're the generation that will hear it. So get excited, people. Jesus is on his way. And we are leaving. All the signs that he's told us would come to pass about World War III are now in the process that we've warned you about now for eight months. That these things would come to pass, and they are coming to pass. The rest of the world, they won't believe it. They're not going to believe it. But we're going to pray that your loved ones, you that come to this channel each and every day, asking for prayer for them, they will be saved. We are not going to have any doubts whatsoever. What did Jesus say? If you had the faith of a mustard seed, you could actually move a mountain. Well, I've got that kind of faith. Your loved ones and your family members, you that are listening to this, they will be saved. God will make that happen before we get out of here. For your devotion and your prayer and your love and you praying for all those souls that reject the Holy Spirit, God knows who you are. I love each and every one of you. Thank you for always being here. Keep your head up. We go home soon. If I don't see or hear from you again, I'll see you in heaven. Be ready.